Hey, Dana. Um, hello. Um, this is a holiday for some folks, um, or official holiday. Let's see who joins. Greetings, Victor. Good morning. We'll give it a few minutes, see who's joining. Um, some folks are taking today off as a holiday. So it may have a short call. I posted the meeting notes to the Zoom chat. Put your name, any agenda items. Yeah, I don't have a formal item, but I uh, can I have some questions now. Uh, just some questions. You want to jot those down, or just? No, no. I I have some uh, questions uh, regarding something I I have read about, learned about lately. All right. Well, let's uh, give it a couple of minutes and see who joins. Okay. All right. Uh, please add your name and we'll jump right in to these notes, which post in Zoom. So let's see, CFP is closed for KubeCon this past uh, Sunday. Um, they have a new network, um, Edge and Telcom track. So hoping to see a lot of new talks that would be aligned in the interest for this working group. KubeCon. Um, worked with Victor Morales from Samsung and we posted a, or submitted a CFP <clears throat> highlighting that would, we'll be highlighting best practices that we're seeing in the NFIO project and related projects that seem to be showing community adoption of those. 
that'll probably feed some of those are going to feed right back into this working group. Um, the Open Source Summit Europe should see the schedule announcement this month, another 10 days. MWC Las Vegas, uh, CFP's closed on those <clears throat> earlier this month. So see what that looks like. Been hearing from folks uh, on this call and, and some other related calls that some people will be there. So maybe we'll have something related to the group we'll announce as we're coming closer. We're starting to see these uh, KubeCon Cloud Native Day uh, events popping up. There was a KCD Columbia <clears throat> that Victor was at, and there's a KCD Texas coming up in October. Thank you. These could be some opportunities to get some telecom related things. During the last KubeCon, there was a lot of overlap between folks that were wanting to be uh, related to the telecom community we're trying to build, Cloud Native Telecom, and the open compute. So there were some folks that actually traveled to go between. If anyone's seeing anything for these or planning on going, I think this one's going to be, we're going to see more overlap. No pull request. Um, I don't know if we have any new issues. Let's see. No new issues. I'm not going to go through all these. Um, I think the main one would be this draft, but I'm going to hold on talking about this one. This is related to one of the issues. <clears throat> a draft proposal for a best practice. And Victor, if, if you want to, if you, you said you have some questions. Yeah. Um, again, I'm just, my question at all is part of the uh, beginner question. So um, I have uh, recently read about uh, the open RAN. I'm just curious what, what available. So my understanding is right now the, um, the, there is a traditional RAN which is mostly by uh, like vendors, uh, Ericsson, et cetera, because um, that's a traditional RAN. And then there's uh, in the, and then the, there's a project called, that's also part of the foundation called Maxima, Megma. That's, that's like a 4G, but going to be including 5G as well, RAN, also open source as well. Um, and after that, there's also Open RAN, which is, I guess, another effort to have a, another uh, next, you can say, next generation RAN, Open RAN, uh, which is also um, part of that um, Linux Foundation, LX networking uh, foundation work. And then on top of that, the Open Networking Foundation, uh, which is not part of a Linux Foundation, also have SD RAN, which is based on Open RAN, but is using software and more uh, software-defined networking components. So, first of all, I get quite question: Is that the correct landscape understanding? And second, is is there any other standard other than Open RAN in the open source community? <clears throat> Um, so you're refer are you referring to uh, this ORAN? Yeah, uh, open RAN. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I just call it open RAN. I'm not sure ORAN is another, is it, or just open RAN. Yes, I just how many. Open RAN flavors out there, open source RANs. 
are there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I would say right now the um, we're going to keep seeing new things coming out. So there's a lot of different work. So, um, and I, Magma, the Magma project, you mentioned that, I think that was uh, Facebook or Meta. Um, it's now, I, I guess it's, you would, I think it's just a donated project. So it's, <clears throat> there's a bunch of other companies. I don't think Meta is um, actively pursuing this, but it seems like there's a bunch of other companies that have been doing work on it. So this, I don't know for sure, like where, where things are going, but it doesn't seem, I guess, dead. Um, and we'll probably see other stuff coming up. Uh, there's a lot of effort from the various cloud providers to support some type of telecom area. And some of them are probably going to come up with something that will be more custom. But most of them, most things that I've seen are, there's a, a lot of, a lot more effort going back into this ORAM. And you have vendors that are talking about compliance with ORAM. Um, the, there's a few open source projects that are related. Um, open 5GS. And then there's like the, on the radio side. So that's for the, the core. And then the radio, there's different projects, including one called, I think it's SRS RAN. Um, but the ORAN, there's specifications and stuff for, and testing for validating does it actually work is it compatible so then when you go talk with a vendor that says they're ORAN compatible on another then the idea would be they should work together um, but I wouldn't say there's <clears throat> here's the one thing we're definitely different groups working on different things uh, are you, what, what are you getting at? And Tom, hi, uh, you may have some thoughts on all this as well. I, I don't know if you heard Victor, but uh, he's mentioning different projects and stuff related to, I guess, RAN and, and core type projects and foundations. But Victor, what, I, I'm trying to see like, what is the question or where are you going with it? Um, one thing. I right now yeah um uh, is it more coming out for interest actually because uh i worked for a telecom as a database guy before um mm -hmm. so i'm just interested in you know what options are, are there when technically what's the differences um yeah that's that's about it at this point it's just uh, more of an interest in the you can say landscape uh information all right um, so <clears throat> like the 4G, 5G um, landscape, something like that. Um, for are we talking open source or what? What are you? Yeah, uh, primarily open source. Um, yeah, just the what? For example, like I'm reading like Open RAM versus ORAN, right? Are they the same organization or are they different? So, um, Tom, are you going to say something? Okay. 
So there is a relationship. I say I get confused with some of these on the difference on talking the alliance. And then what are the projects within um, the software? Well, it's re they refer to Open RAN on this. And then you see the ORAN also. But if you go look at <clears throat> Open RAN, you have the ORAN Alliance tied in with. Uh, what they're doing over here within the tip. It's interesting if you see the uh, picture down here, the ONF SD RAN is also part of this big picture. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this, this is very confusing. So it's more of a personal interest rather than you know, any any project like it, yeah, it's just a very confusing. Um, yeah, I don't feel like I can say uh, specifically, but my take on it is the, um, this whole, so the telecom info project. So TIP in some ways seems to be more, it reminds me more of like an IEEE type of group or something that's coming together and um, pushing for the technical side in some ways. So testing and everything else. And the just the concept of having all of this is of interest. And then the ORAN, this is... Well, I don't want to use the word alliance. So this is a <laughs> a group of companies that are coming together that are saying, we're going to build out and agree on a specification for Iran. So they're doing something that TIP is interested in, but I think T TIP would, wouldn't care if it was Iran or anyone else is the way that I'm looking at it. I don't know, Tom, if you have any, if you're there, I'm not seeing your mic open but saying the difference between these. Um, ORAN is, the ORAN project actually has, um, they have specifications that people are implementing. And so you have projects that are actually implementing what you see in here and, and then doing testing to validate that they work together. Um, I, I won't say that you don't see that over in TIP. You definitely see like working projects, but it kind of feels like a broader scope. And then for what TIP is doing. So, so you're saying the uh, telecom infra uh, project, that, that's more of a, it's a very fragmented industry, but that TIP is relatively can be called a kind of standard body at this point? Yeah, you mentioned, I think, ONF. So ONF, I would think of them as a broader foundation and TIP is a larger, a large, large foundation. And if you're looking at, um, I don't wanna say LF because you have stuff that's non-telecom and LF, but like LFN or one of the others. So these, that type of foundation level. The ORAN Alliance isn't trying to take on, you know, I wouldn't even say all things telecom. It seems to be very focused on the RAN side of things. So you have a lot of other telecom software and a lot of it. They're not building a cloud in ORAN, but I could see, I don't, I'm not gonna go through all the projects, but you, yeah, okay, so like just this uh, neutral host NAS 
open automation. Those are things in my mind that are well beyond the scope of ORAN. So ORAN Alliance is a smaller scope than what the TIP would be taking on. Magma is not, so ORAN Alliance, you could come up with a lot of different software that's compatible with ORAN at the specification. Um, Magma is an implementation. So this is one step more detailed. So, so Magma is more of a actual ready to use implementation. Yeah, it would be a ready to use implementation. So then like, um, let's see. SRS ran and then Let's see if I can find the open 5GS. <clears throat> the, this would be between these two, SRS RAN and open 5GS, you would have a an implementation that you could use for building out. This would be comparable to say, well, Magma's uh, primarily for but. SRS RAN plus Open 5GS would be your the radio side and the uh, 5G the core pieces. Really, and there's not a around. single. Sounds like there's not a single Open RAN per se. It's really fragmented. Well, I wouldn't say it's fragmented. So ORAN is they're trying to build a standard that other people can follow. And then, so if you go, there's there's vendors that are building multiple pieces and some that are building singles. So you may have one component for on the RAN side or maybe a component for the core, but it has compat it's following the specifications for ORAN. So then maybe you don't use SRS RAN project for the radio but you happen to use, let's say, Open5GS, which is compatible with ORAN spec, but you buy a, you go to some vendor that says they're ORAN compatible and you can use that. So ORAN is trying to have an open standard that anyone can follow and then um, a, a service provider can come in and if they, if they say, we want to use o, an ORAN we want to build an ORAN compatible network. Then they can pick vendors who are ORAN compatible. And um, the idea is they would know that they're going to work together. Okay. So relatively, ORAN is the standard body, relatively compared to the other project. Specifically for the, the RAN side, they're the standard body for the RAN side. Uh, just for the RAN, ORAN is the organization that try to make it more standard. Yeah, so they're not they're not talking about like the protocols between all of the components for any every part of the the network. So you still see like three GPP standards in use. Magma is not using three GPP for all communication. Uh, let's see if they have a, I don't see a, a diagram here. Um, so when you look at the magma core and there's some of the pieces that instead of using 3GPP, they're using gRPC or some, and some protocol for communicating between the components. And then they'll use, where they need to communicate with uh, the RAN, you'll see a compatible 3GP um, con uh, connection, but then the internal connections won't be using that. But you may find someone else that's building a, a core non-magma and those internal components are using 3GPP or maybe they're doing something completely different. So 
my point was ORAN isn't trying to be the standard body for all communication between all software. And the, they're specifically talking about the, the RAN side. Okay. Okay, thank you. That, at least that, that's clear now. ORAN is sort of the, uh, at least for RAN, that's, that's the standard uh, effort for now, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are other efforts and there's vendors that are have, you can go buy um, a RAN solution right now that's not a RAN compatible. There's a lot of them. So this is an effort. It's not that everyone has said, we're going to do it and drop everything else. But it is an effort to do that. And you do see a lot of companies that are either saying or already building software that is ORAN compatible, but it doesn't mean even, even those companies may have non ORAN compatible versions. So, so it just actually a follow up question is because I worked for telecom before, I know there is a roaming uh, issue when network are not compatible, right? So um, is it true that if, uh, if two network, if they all follow ORAN standard and it's possible to do uh, network roaming, whereas if it's not compatible, then it's not possible. Is that, is that correct? Um, you're talking about, okay, so you have devices that are roaming between the networks and then are, are they gonna be compatible if one provider is ORAN using ORAN and another is not? Correct. So uh, it may have some influence, but now we're, um, and Nikolai, I see you on, if you have thoughts, please jump in. Um, so the, the uh, device that's connecting, there's standards for the device. So similar to their standards for the components within the core, there's and and then the core talking to other networks and everything. So now you're talking the device talking to the towers. Well, there's standards for that too. So the this ORAN is focused on how do we build the components to build um, when we're <clears throat> building when you're going to deploy these new uh, locations, how are they going to, how are the components coming together and then how do they talk with the core? When you're looking at the devices and you're saying it's 5G or 4G or whatever else, well, that's its own protocol. So I, you're not, you're not likely to see someone saying they're 5G and they're going to be selling a radio software and hardware solution that's going to be incompatible with other 5G. I don't, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think you're probably going to see compatibility at that level for devices connecting, um, whether it's using a brand or anything else. Nikolai? Uh, hey Taylor, hey everyone. Uh, so I, I just posted the link in the chat. Can you just open it? It shows the uh, Oran architecture. I don't know if this was so already shared. So, so this is essentially. Now the whole point is that, uh, for example, the uh, OEN, B, OCU, CP, OCU, UP, uh, all these co components, they can be um, implemented as uh, how to say containerized functions, virtual functions, uh, or even physical boxes. So the the point is that the interface is un standardized here, and there are different splits. Uh, if you go deep into that, there are splits where they, they say, for example, the CUP lives uh, I don't know in the in the cloud somewhere, uh, where the DU lives in the uh, closer to the you know B uh, and things like that. 
I mean, there are many, many details here that can be looked and it's a matter of going reading the specs, but um, it's all about implementing the interfaces and then the way that the functions are implemented is essentially not um, not important. What's important here is the, the split of the function. So the, um, the rig, the uh, CU split, the DU, uh, and uh, are you, of course, uh, is all probably mostly a hardware thing, right? or, or are you? Um, I don't know if it can even be containerized or like softwareized at all. Um, for the DU, I have seen a box of sorts, which was supposed to run uh, like a con container or something, but this was not really, not, not really flexible. Um, the CU split. Uh, uh, where's the UE? I'm trying to look. It doesn't. I don't see the UE at all. Uh, yeah, I mean it's. Um, <laughs> it lives uh, somewhere um, connected to the radio, right? Right. It's yeah, but but it's it's not part of the Oran spec. That's that's what yeah. So that's what we were getting at, and what I think that what Victor's asking, like, where's the UE, and can I move if? If someone is implementing all this, what ORAN is um, specifying, are they going to be able to then talk with someone with non a non ORAN tower? And I my I yes because I if you no see reason. the radio is a totally it's it's not showing on here, but that's an that would be another line, and that's its own standard, and everybody. Well, I'll say that, but they're, uh, they're I actually think that, five that the, standards. Oh, because Not you see at the, bottom, at the bottom, it says open FH. That should be front hole or something. So I guess that the RU should be the antenna, you know, thing. The ORU. But the point is that this whole thing, uh, as if you see on, on, on the right, it, it, it essentially, it outputs or inputs if you owe three GPP interfaces, so all uh, so all the whole whole this architecture is actually pluggable to a pre-existing three GPP, you know, core. Which means the the pluggable part will work yes. with a nano RAN is for the yeah, but 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 data. or or RAN doesn't doesn't define anything about that. They just say okay, I mean uh, our. Uh, and uh, this is standard, like the CU, right? Uh, it's uh, it's standard, right? I mean, it just talks to the um, to the five G core and so on, right? Right. And I, I guess what to to take it the other way is that well, that's talking to the five G core. So they you could build a CU that doesn't use three GPP standards and uses some other communication method to talk to a core that doesn't is not compatible with 3gpp so as mentioning magma for some of it yeah. doesn't yeah. so you theoretically yeah. could have the cu actually do that but the, and then likewise you could build the radio part where you go we built our own special radio or i don't know maybe that maybe you go someone came out with a alpha version of 6g that's not <laughs> it's not official and and they built a, a the radio portion in yep. their ORAN, but that has nothing to do with ORAN. so victor the main thing is the the radio connectivity to your device ORAN doesn't specify anything so that's up to the person implementing to decide what standard. And at this point, they're all trying to do, if we say 5G, then they're trying to, to have all of the different um, options. And there are multiple options. It's actually harder on the phone side. So you're, you're picking out what phones and stuff actually support all of the different bands for 5G, then you're good. But that's not ORAN. And likewise, what Victor, yeah. what Victor, um, I mean Nikolai, sorry, what Nikolai's saying, Victor, was your ORAN talking to the core. It it also doesn't specify anything there. 
So it's oh, so sounds like the, the the device roaming is more actually related to the radio tower itself rather than the the ORAN is still the infrastructure after the tower. Uh, but no, it, so no, the radio. So it's the internal. I would say it's the internal components of the tower. So then you say the tower has an interface to talk to your your device. And then there's a interface to talk to the core. And ORAN cares about what's it's trying to say you can break down the different pieces of the 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 rate the actual um tower radio, the software and everything. But the you're roaming when you're thinking roaming, the device talking. So the first part is can I talk? Can I, do I speak the same protocol and everything? Well, that's not ORAN, but there are there's standards already for that, but outside of ORAN. And then does your tower talk with the 5G core? Well, there's also standards for that and ORAN doesn't care about that. Okay. So if, if you care about those, so it's really, what do you care about? So if, if you're looking at, I want to build a, a tower and I, I, I'm interested in breaking down the components or whatever, well, ORAN has, here's a specification and they're trying to say, we can follow this and you can use different components or you'll be compatible with other ones. But here's Is there a good um, website or blog that talk about what you just mentioned? Uh, which part? Uh, just like the, the, the device talk to the radio, that's one component. And ORAM uh, basically is the main component for the RAM, but it's not related to how the tower, tower talk to the device. Then there's another component that talk to the core. That's not ORAM. And <laughs> so yeah, yeah, just all those different component that how to like the 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 the, 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 the whole telecom infrastructure. I don't yeah. I don't know Can a I... website that has all that. Go ahead, Nikolai. Yeah, I just just wanted to add that the purpose of the Oran is mainly to kind of uh, allow for innovation on one side here, yeah, like by uh, by just dividing the components into like the the, the dividing the uh, old school uh g node b into subcomponents that that are kind of um standardized uh, interface wise so for example if i can give an example for my previous company juniper we were implementing the near real time rig and non real time rig and as long as these uh, uh, rig implementations were implementing key 2 a1 o1 uh o2 i don't think that we were implementing uh these were uh, applicable to run with uh, all with uh, with several other uh, we were verifying with several other vendors implementations of the CU, DU, uh, and so on. Uh, if you see what I mean, so this essentially allows for different vendors to implement different components and essentially to build uh, more interesting uh, so solutions here. I'm not sure if I'm a straight answering uh, question here, but it's more like yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I have enough information to go back and read and come back for more questions. I appreciate yeah. it. But yeah, so far. Yeah, thanks. Also, it's not necessary that all of this is running in the tower. Some of these are running on the edge, like, you know, some kind of uh, edge data center, uh, which allowed for some, so essentially probably the data path sensitive. So the DU part uh, and the area, they are kind of sitting on the tower or close there. Uh, everything Actually, else. Not, not, now that you bring up another interesting uh, concept, edge, uh, so, Traditionally, like several years ago, when I heard edge, usually it means in a far edge, near edge, and you know, on-premise, mm -hmm. right? Those, those kind of edge concepts. 
But the, uh, I think the 2020 uh, Linux Networking uh, Foundation white paper basically give a, a different uh, uh, definition, right? So, 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 so basically the idea is uh, use public cloud probably as a center and then there's like a user edge and a service provider edge, and and there in there there are also subcategories. So so yeah, so the definition of it, but there's also other possibilities that you said. It could be even very remote area for satellites. It could be um, area was really remote, so um, uh, or, or, or even deep in the ground, right? So those. Uh, what, so what is the is there any, any universal definition of what is uh, the categories of edge? Well, I guess the simplest thing, at least in, in my mind, would be everything that's out of a, the standard data center, right? And in, depending how far it is from the data center or cl how close it is to user, then you can divide it on whatever. Like, uh, I don't know. Back in the day, there was the last mile and all this. Yeah, is it, is it by application or, you, uh, or or type of use cases or by the product particle used what was what it what's a standard to categorize it? yeah it's standard like i mean uh, in uh, the, from for what and you and you en enumerated i think that i mean uh, there were clearly two things one is the type of the workload because you were uh, talking about service provider edge or user edge and then uh, the other thing is, you know, the distance from the user or from the data center, like near, far, and so on and so forth. So kind of, it seems like there are two, two, two main, um, let's say, distinguishers. Yeah. So I, I, I would say, yeah, for me, it's more, it's confusing, it's intriguing, but yeah, at the same time, make it interesting to find out what it is. <laughs> But definitely, I had a lot of good information. So, so thank you all for the good information. I'll go back and read more. Is there? Uh, it's conf I think it uh, causes confusion to just say five G, five G core compared to um, evolved packet core, which included. The, well, I mean, I guess it was the evolved packet core, I, the evolved packet system. That's what I was thinking. Uh, Nikolai? Oh, I remember this slide. Yeah. You remember <laughs> that? <laughs> so, remember, yeah. yeah. Was it 4G thing? Yeah, it is 4G thing. Like. Yeah, yeah. That's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, it, I can't find something that's equivalent on that encompasses all of it that would make it so when victor's talking about this saying what where you know what is all of it from the 4g side then i think the evolved packet system and then you can go oh we want to talk about enode b so that's when we're saying what is oran well it's it's only talking about this part victor right here it's enode b and breaking down this part into components and making this compatible. And then when you're talking magma, then you're saying it's equivalent, it's talking about components over here. What is this? Well, this is the packet core. Okay, so there's still tons of other pieces. If you wanna go and say, well, I'm interested in voice over Wi-Fi, well, that's this this whole thing, this packet data gateway that talks to your packet core, but you can you don't have to even think about the packet core if you go, well, we're gonna use whatever the standard interface to talk to the core. Okay, great. Well, now you're just talking about how does your how do, how do you deal with um, your device and Wi-Fi and then talking to some gateway. And there can be different solutions. But my point, um, Nikolai, is what do you call the new system, this evolved packet system? 
when you say 5G core, does that really encompass everything? Because it, to me, it seems like I keep seeing other pieces that come up. Or when okay. someone says 5G core, they actually meant, oh, you're just talking about the core, not, you didn't mean the RAN. Yeah, because essentially there is 5G core and 5G core uh, standalone. Yeah. So, yeah, because the standalone essentially means that you you also employ uh, uh, the new radio, right? Right. Because, yeah, they were having the mode where you can actually, you can have 5G, but only on the radio part. Mm -hmm. Then the core was 4G or something. And then, yeah, because I think that this was the first wave. You know, this was the, the easier, like, approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, <laughs> you know, change the radio, like the antennas and stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, because the core is more, 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 more involving to, uh, to change. And then essentially the standalone means, okay, it's, it's only 5G. The whole the whole system. Uh, I don't I don't know what the the, the exact name would be, uh, because yeah, this was the EPC right back in the evolved packet core, but the you would I think it just five five GSA would be probably, I guess. Uh, so if <laughs> you're thinking five G standalone, I I mean it's confusing because I see um, standalone and then they'll say. And it's we also have a compatibility for your 4G connections. And and then it makes it confusing again. We we have everything that will work for just 5G, the 5G core, a 5G tower, but we have you know, can we have the connectivity for 4G to connect into this 5G standalone? It makes it confusing. <laughs> I will, will agree here. <laughs> so, uh, Victor, I'll, I'll 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 just go back and say it this way: even if you come and find the name, and it will probably go look at five G standalone, and go look at non non five G stand standalone or non five G SA versus five G SA or standalone, and you look at the architecture on that. And then you're just going to have to dig in. So if you go see what Cisco and Nokia and any of the big ones, they're going to talk about everything. They're going to talk about the, the and I, I'm showing 4G, but it will be the similar thing. So you're, you have all the components on the core for 5G, and then you're going to have all sorts of pieces that connect into it. And then you're going to have the tower. So on the standalone, you can you can focus in on the 5G courses, and then the non-standalone, you'll probably end up saying, here's, here's a component that allows us to communicate with 4G networks and that bridges between a 4G network. And then, of course, you can expand out still with like the voice over Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Um, and I from what I've seen, a lot of the components like this MME and all the session management, I mean, I, it may be changing more now, but a lot of them seem to have compatibility, but still between 4G and 5G for those. Uh, I'm going to bring up whatever you drop. Yeah, this is, I believe this is a good overview. Let's drop that in here too. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I should have the dropped it there. Oh, it's fine. Uh, I'll go back over. All right, go ahead. Uh, well, I think that, that that this fine. is a good overview of the, and as you see, they call it 5G system. It's like <laughs> 5G. Okay. All right, 5G. that was 5G system. Okay. And this is 3GPP, so they... <laughs> Oh, so does in that case, if uh, uh, Magma is a packet core, does it need a, a RAN component to work or it has its own RAN component? Uh, 
I, I didn't understand that. Can you say it again? Uh, th does Magma need, uh, like, you work together with, together with Open RAN? Or it has, it has its own uh, mm. RAN component? My impression is that Magma is somehow challenging the 3GPP and saying, OK, we know better. But I might be wrong here. <laughs> Um, well, they're they're saying it only on on one part. I'm I'm just trying to find like a. I'll have to pop this and see if I can. Uh, there's only. Um, well, actually, I think the the slide that we made helps. So, I'll go look and see if I can find a magma. But this is actually higher level. You can break these down, and there's a lot of connections more components as you break each of these down but this at least helps so you here you have a tower and it's talking to this sgw service gateway right and then this is actually talking you know to this packet gateway um it it goes all the way through to the mme so this is going to get information about the yeah, actual user the control path there right and the the, the user but it's so going this connection right here, this dotted connection and this dotted connection. This is where magma is making oh. some differences. Talking to the enode B, magma uses the same 3GPP standard. So magma can talk to um, a tower that's using the it's, if it's following 3GPP for connectivity, it will be able to talk to Magma. Magma is not doing, they don't have a, a radio access network software. They're doing these components. What do, what do we call these? These are the, this is, well, the Evolve Packet System is the whole thing, right? And then we're talking the Evolve Packet Core. So this one helps two maybe, Victor. So Magma is interested in the evolved packet core, and I'm talking for 4G here. So anything that's trying to do 5G it would be similar, just 5G core. So you have the entire thing, evolved packet system, all the different pieces. And then Magma says, we're writing software for this evolved packet core, the control plane, user plane, I think our next, uh, yeah, digging in here. So now we break this down. Some of it, they use 3GPP standard for talking between the components, and some of them they use some other paper, uh, some other paper, some other standard. Um, operator, I'm trying to look, where, where does it show? None of that helps me, but it's 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 some part of the core pieces here. They used to have a a good diagram, but this doesn't really help. Oh, actually, that is one part. They have this federation gateway using gRPC with this orchestrator, that's fine. So that's a little bit different, but I know that at least some of the um, core pieces also use gRPC. But it is compatible with your radio. I have no idea if what type of compatibility magma has with 5g do you know nikolai i mean i see it here actually non-standalone and 5g standalone all right okay so it looks like they're and this is important if you actually get in it these n1 n2 n3 when if you actually start doing the testing um and looking at phones and stuff that are compatible. All right, so just looking at this, Victor, if Magma has a working 3GP compliant 5G 
then they should be able to work with something like uh, I was showing like SRS RAM. So if you run, if you, this is an open source project. So if you get this up and running and, and have Magma up and running, then you should be able to have them speak together. But that has nothing to do with ORAM. That has to do with this 3GP com compatibility. Okay. But if you want to look at the entire architecture, then the we posted the link into the uh, Google Docs here. So probably just talk starting with the um, this 5G system overview. I mean, this is so simplified. Look at that Nikolai. Here it is. <laughs> so, you, but I guess that's all right. So you have a device and it's talking. So this NRUU, so we're talking, this is 3GPP. So this is a standard, that's the roaming that you were caring about. ORAN cares about this part right here, this GNB. And it's talking about how do we create this? How do we break down the components here? And then here's this F5GC, this is the core. So again, if you talk, where it has this NG, if you use the protocol that 3GPP is using, then whatever, however your core is designed internally, it can talk to any tower that speaks that. So whether you have an ORAN compatible core or not, if it uses 3GPP, it can talk to this. So then really what, uh, you can go and look and just, dig into all the different pieces and then at some point you have to decide where am i wanting to focus and that's where it ties in with i need, i want to dig into one area um this is digging more it's showing the different components in each of the parts the ran is just one here's your device again but you can this is going to tie into a bunch of other pieces. And you can go into um, each one of these in depth. So again, Magma is gonna go in, in depth more on the 5G C or the Evolve Packet Core APC since it had compatibility there. Uh, ORAN has a lot of soft, a lot of uh, documentation. It's gonna, care more about the um the the gina b or the the ran side s srs ran there's a whole lot of documentation that'll break that down so if you care about that then you can go jump into documentation from one of those projects but if you go read this one right here you can go look at Cisco, you can go look at Nokia, and they'll have a lot, there's a lot of documentation out there from uh, vendors that have talked about it and have, they'll take something like this, the stack, and they'll, they'll dig into each one of the components on the stack. I think this is another good one. All right, top of the hour. Um, Thanks for all the great questions, Victor. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the information. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Yeah.